My name is Kim and I'm the founder and editor of For Harriet. And I wanted to take a minute to talk about why I am currently taking a break from church. So I have been in church my entire life, right? My parents actually met in church. So I have been vacation Bible school in it, Sunday school in it, drill team, church choir, the works since I was a kid. And I cannot overstate the important role and the positive role that church has been to my development as a young black woman. So my relationship is really and truly complicated. I can remember as a kid, as somebody who was labeled exceptional and as you know, a kid I was pretty high achieving, you know, that can be isolating, right? It can be a little bit uncomfortable feeling like you're different, even if it's for a, a, something that is supposedly positive. And the support that I received at church, uh, the encouragement, the kind words, the gifts, really were instrumental in helping me to develop a positive sense of self, right? Helping me to feel worthy, and great that so much of my identity was rooted in this intellectual capacity. And that really <laughs> has stuck with me because you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> but um, even moving into my young adult life, right? Like there was a period where I wasn't so into to religion and going to church and I came back to church as uh, a young adult um, after my father died and I was back home really trying to work through my depression and work through, you know, for the first time in my life, after being this really, really super focused, super intense kid, really not knowing what I wanted to do and, and really needing um, guidance about my purpose and my path. So going to church, engaging the com community, but also in developing a real relationship with God as an adult um, has been so instrumental in me being, you know, the happy, healthy person that I am right now, right? But even as a kid, I remember listening to sermons and, and sitting through lessons and thinking that some of the things that I was hearing just, just didn't sound right. You know, as somebody who I feel like I had a political identity even when I was really young, I just remember thinking like, God is, is love, right? So this just isn't, you know, the finger pointing just didn't sit well with me. And now that I'm getting older and maturing in my political identity, I find myself even more concerned about some of the more conservative theologies that I have encountered right because because a, a lot of preaching right can can really reinforce some really conservative ideologies about gender about sexuality you know even about race that i feel are quite oppressive and i'm reaching a point where i am uncomfortable leaving my political self at home every sunday morning in order to engage with my spiritual self, right? Because I just, I just don't believe that women's bodies are a stumbling block for men. I just don't believe that our sexualities are shameful. I don't believe that we can't find satisfaction in our sexual selves and, and um, be, bring shame to God. You know, it's just, it's not cool for me. You know, I don't believe that gays and lesbians and transgender members of the church should be ashamed of their identities. So right now I'm having some real difficulties reconciling that with what I often encounter. And I will say even the church that I'm a member of right now is rather progressive, right? Like there's they have women in the pulpit, which, you know, people get people get mad when they see women preaching. Um, and 
I appreciate that. But, you know, maybe it's where I live. I just don't encounter enough progressiveness. Um, but also, you know, there's something to be said about the fact that despite the fact that even if my church home, I feel like, is a progressive and often empowering space, I also have to look at the theologies that are promoted by the, quote, black church as a whole, and whether or not that is damaging and, and whether or not it is oppressive. And often I think that it is, right? So I really have to firmly condemn theologies that are rooted in condemnation, that are rooted in judgment and in shame, and seek out those that are uh, centered in love, and grace and liberation, right? Because I really feel like at this point, we all just trying to get free, you know? And, and that should be the goal inside of church and outside. And uh, I'm asking the questions right now. And one of the reasons why this video is titled why I'm taking a break from the church and not why I'm leaving and never coming back. Um, because I have in my quest to really reconcile my political self and my spiritual self, sought out the work of womanist theologians and womanist scholars like Kelly Brown Douglas, like Katie Cannon, like Monica Coleman, who are uh, making a space for themselves in uh, a theology that is often oppressive, right? So they are articulating new ways to think about our relationships to God, new ways to interpret the Bible, right? That are not as restrictive as what a lot of us have been taught, like our mothers and our grandparents have been taught, right? And these new ways are not necessarily wrong, right? Because we, we are all using different lenses when we interpret the Bible, but it's just, it's something new, right? And so as I am exploring these texts and really engaging the work of these authors, I am seeing that there is possibility there that we can create the space and that we can take the space and that we don't necessarily have to completely abandon this institution that has been so important for Black people so important for women, right? That we've put so much of our energy in, our time in, our money in. Like we don't necessarily necessarily have to abandon it, but we can be a part of the transformation, right? But I'm still not there. I'm still not on the way there yet. And I'm, I'm really working through it and making sure that I'm asking the questions and getting the answers that I need and not just ignoring the questions that I have, so that I can have be a happy Christian woman, right? Because it's really important for me to always interrogate my biases. And I am really offended by hate the sin and not the sinner theology. Like I'm really offended by, well, you know, I don't agree with it, but you know, only God can judge theology because I do feel like it's a cop out. I do feel like it is a continuation of stigmatizing certain bodies and stigmatizing certain people's identities because it's really difficult to say well, maybe that's not a, right like like if you're really it's really difficult <laughs> to find those discrepancies but honestly the bible is full of them we all pick and choose that's you know what i'm learning and you know we just have to work through that but um yeah, you know, I really wanted to make the video because I want people to understand that it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to not know. I think sometimes, you know, in the the uh, church context that I've been in, you know, asking questions is not always encouraged, right? It means that you have a lack of faith. It means that you're not really committed, that your relationship isn't strong enough. But I truly believe that I was given this brain for a reason. I am a curious person. I seek out knowledge and and I would not have this, these feelings and this brain and this desire to really think critically and have to work through things if God didn't give it to me. So uh, I'm really 
really interested in having a conversation about this, right? I don't really want to hear about, you know, why the church is ruining black women or, or on the other hand, I don't really want to hear about why black women are doomed because we are not as religious as we used to be. But I'm really interested in hearing stories if you have them about a time of questioning in your life and, and where it led you, whether it led you to completely abandon the church, which is cool, like I do what you gotta do, or whether it led you to have a renewed faith, um, a faith that really suits you and your life. Uh, so yeah, anyways, this could get messy, but I think it'll be fine. Um, leave a comment, feel free to tweet me, or send me an email and uh, visit the site for Harriet.com.